I feel like I am literally living now where I wasn't. Yeah. I was still trapped. I felt like I was in all that bondage. And right. I know there's some songs that we sing where just right. letting that bondage go. And I just feel released from that bondage yeah. that the enemy kept telling me all those lies for so long. That now I just say, whatever, you're a liar. Yeah. And seriously. Yeah. You're not trapping me again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm living for the Lord. All right. Welcome back to Iron Sharpens Iron, where our goal is to be encouraged and exhorted and challenged as we hear God's goodness, his faithfulness, his love through um, people's stories of how he interacts with them. And today I have my friend Melissa with us. Melissa, how you doing? I'm good. You're good. We're a little, little bit nervous, nervous right? That's yes. okay. Yeah, we'll get there. We're just going to have a good conversation today. I have heard your story and I love it. God is so good and he's so faithful. And there's some pieces of your story, just how intimately he engaged with you just to, to go, just to show you that love. And so maybe we could start there. Tell me a little bit about your story. So, um, <laughs> sorry, just, just, it's all sorry, right. You're just looking sorry, at me. Sorry, let's sorry. <sighs> just tell me, let's go back to the beginning. Tell me, tell me how, tell me the, your beginning of, of your testimony, how God met you. I'd love to hear that. The beginning of the testimony is when my butt God moment or before yeah. that. Yeah. You can start before that to set the stage. So sure. this, I would guess the stage. Yeah. Setting the stage would be good. So I was raised abused. Mm. Like, yeah. um, my real mom gave me to my dad when they got divorced when I was three. And then I was raised by a stepmom. And she didn't care for me. Um, and not to go into details or anything, but she sexually, not from her, but my background is, I want to start over. <laughs> there, your background was there was a lot of abuse. There was a lot of abuse in, in my background. Levels. Yes. Um, physical, mental, yeah. and sexual. Yeah. Um, mostly mental my whole life. Um, yeah. And because of the background, um, I wasn't a nice person. I mean, I feel like I would put on a mask yeah. to like make people think I was happy, but I wasn't happy. Yeah. I was very miserable. Um, and it was just really rough growing up. And, and then I met my husband when we were 15 and then, I mean, we didn't get a booklet on, we didn't know about the Bible, right? right so right. we didn't know, like, how to have a good relationship. Yeah. We didn't know how to be married. Yeah. We didn't know how to raise children. Yeah. So all of that, like, all of it was a struggle. Yeah. Um, And just trying to fight to live is how I really feel like I did yeah. for many years just it was and more about on survival a, than yeah, thriving yeah putting my face on like yeah i'm happy i'm you know we had a taekwondo business and i loved people coming in and helping people i just i do like to help people <laughs> yeah <laughs> so and it was but it was got hard like yeah. just struggles with the kids having homework and getting up there more regularly just not feeling connected sometimes with my yeah. husband and just it just so we just stopped going um and I do regret that like that we I just allowed the circumstances of the life to to not continue in that with my girls um I mean they had a choice we could have went <laughs> but I don't want I don't know it's just Life was hard. Put it that way. Yeah. So. Life was hard. And I mean, the phrase is hurt people 
Exactly. Hurt, hurt people. people. Hurt people. So, and so I, that was kind of your story. In my sins, I hurt people. From my past, I hurt people. It, it grew the character who I was at the time. Yeah. Um, and I made choices that I regret, you know? Yeah. I mean, I really do. I regret a lot of things. Um, the biggest... Um, thing that I really regret, I would say, is that I didn't have my children in church mm -hmm. um, to learn about Jesus and yeah. his love. And, of course, I knew that all now to right. that. Right. I wished I would That's the redemption part of the story, though. The whole, yeah. the whole time when they were growing up, I always say, Jesus loves you, God loves you. But I really didn't know what that mm -hmm. meant. But that's all I knew to tell them, yeah. to hopefully give them comfort. But, um, and then cheating on my husband, that was like the biggest mm. thing that I hurt him so bad. And that has drew, drew my life for so long yeah. is that I hurt him so bad, even though he didn't even know it for seven years. Yeah. But that's part of my story too right. later. Right. Um, so Let's go straight to the but God moment, right? Okay. So I'm driving. I'm on my way to commit adultery um, with my from. I'm driving, and all of a sudden, I hear Melissa, and I'm like, "What? There's nobody in my car." I'm like, "Where'd that come from?" And I'm like, "So then I hear it again a second time." I said. Melissa and I was like, yes. And then I heard, this is not the life I planned for you. And I literally pulled the car over and I literally just broke down. Like mm. I was like, I don't know what, like my life had spiraled so far down. I literally felt like I had a choice to make. I know God is a God of second, third, fourth, 20,000 <laughs> yeah. chances but at that moment i didn't know because i wasn't in church i hadn't i had you didn't really know him yeah i didn't know him yeah. at all so i um but i felt like you need to make a choice here like and i literally gave my life to god in that moment i pulled the car over i just cried out like of everything i could think of that how my life was so messed up and I, mm. I needed him. And it was like, he was like, I'm here, you know? Yeah. And, and I just felt like a peace that can only come from him because my life was so messed up that yeah. I just, yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't, it was my doing. I did. I made these choices in my life. So yeah. that that's hard to come back from, you know, like, but only God could, yeah. Like literally give me peace that he was going to be there. And that is something I just hold on to all the time that I know he's never going to leave me. And I feel like people have left me and it's just, it's just part of that story. You know, nothing, like, nothing in your background gave you the hope of no, no, somebody would enter in into the mess. Yeah. And the, and stay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's so good. I, it's it's like a Saul before he becomes Paul moment, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Such a good thing. So yeah. so what happens from that? So you pull over, you have this moment, and then what happens? So that's another sad part to me because I didn't know I wasn't in church. I didn't know about God, like really. Um. I didn't tell anybody. And so every night I was, because of my relationship with my husband, I was saddened because of what I had done and I knew it would hurt him. But I pretty much just, I'm never going to tell him. I cannot tell him this because it will devastate him. And, but our marriage, I feel like it was already broke. Yeah, right. Yeah. And sin can have such a, Yes, it was a heavy thing yes. to us. Yeah. Yes. So because of that, I did get like the enemy was constantly attacking me. Hmm. Like he was, my mind was blown for, I would say a good bit of 10 years. Hmm. 
um, because I now my daughter had come to me like the next week and said, hey, mom, my friend is going to be preaching at this church next week. Can we go? And I was like, sure, we can go. You know, I mean, I'm like, OK, God, I didn't know God. He saves me, and now he's prepared a church for me to go to, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking, because I'm crying every night, like, God, I don't know how to live this life. I don't know what to do. I don't know how anything's going to work out. So yeah. I'm just literally crying every night. Like, I feel like I, I don't know what to do. So I have to lean on him, because how else am I going to get through the next minute, the next day, the next yeah. week, you know? Yeah. So... He um, provides a church, and we're going to this church. We've been we went there for seven years, but I didn't feel like I was learning the word. Mm. So I was craving, like I just wanted to know the word, but I didn't understand the Bible. Yeah, like I'm like I don't even know what this is saying. I even bought the Bible where you before we had you know now we have our phones we could put the Bible right. in there, but they had it like a Bible reader you could listen to. So I listened to that and I catch here things here and there, and then um, the preacher would say something. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that story. I heard that, but to read it, I wasn't understanding it. So yeah. my grandfather over 20 years before had given me my sister and my cousin a set of bible story the children's bible books that you go to the doctor's office and they have edition one right Right. there's 10 of them yeah so i had opened the first one i guess when he gave it to me but it never went past that and i had them i like we traveled from Pensacola, New Orleans to here yeah. and from the apartment to the house. I had them. I just moved them from one room to the other or whatever. Um, and then I was like, oh, I have these storybooks. My grandfather gave them to me. And so I started reading them and I read them all. And it, things were opening up like my eyes were like, wow, this is this is great. I'm That's understanding, awesome. but yeah. I'm always praying God help me to understand your word because I don't yeah. understand it and the, how it applies and how it could change my life and through the stories I was able to understand that then I would order these Christian like these um oh, I can't remember what it's called but um uh Chris kids stories that yeah. are on DVD yeah. and watching those every month when they came in and just so I would understand but then I was working at, um, I clean houses. So I was at a house cleaning and I still swear that they must've had cameras because they let me go after this day that I had there. (laughs) Um, it was, I was listening to the Bible on, um, the thing. And, um, I heard God say, you have to tell him. And I was like, I have to tell him what? You have to tell him because I I felt like there was a next step, a next step. Like I could go to this next step and then he would tell me what else to do. What's the next step, you know? And so I felt like he was saying that was the next step. And I was like, this has been seven years now. Yeah. And I was like, I can't. I'm going to my grave with that. I can't hurt him. I know how bad bad it's going to hurt him and I truly do love him and I love my kids and I don't want to lose my family I really don't and he's like I'll be with you and I was like okay I know you've been with me but what's that look like what's that mean and no answer and I didn't know what that would look like and I finally said okay I'll tell him and he said, today. <laughs> like, yeah. <"Hey." laughs> like, today? Yep. Can I wait a week? You know? And I maybe that's one thing why I like things just done. <laughs> but um, he did. He said, today. And I was like, okay, I, I promise I will tell him today. And he's like, I'll be with you. Okay. So I finished cleaning. And I go home. And um, Chuck never paid attention at that time to, like, my emotions or whatever because I could be crying all day and he wouldn't know. But that day, I walked in the house and he was going to leave, like, 
of course, we had kids. So I was coming home, and then he was leaving to go to the Taekwondo school. And then um, he said, you have something to tell me. Mm. What? What? (laughs) And I was like, I do. And he said, okay. I said, I promised God that I would tell you today. I said, but you go do the Taekwondo, and then when you get back, I'll tell you. And he said, nope, you're going to tell me right now. I was like, okay. So we stepped out to the front porch because the kids, you know. And I told him. And he, I said, yeah. ask me whatever you want to ask me because God wants me to tell you whatever you want to know. And so I told him everything. Like, And I told him that I had been saved because of this too. And um, he just reached up. He hugged me. He says, I'm not going anywhere. And I promise you, I felt God just hug us. Wow. And I have held on to this hug for like literally we have rough patches. And I always go back to, but God held us together. Yeah. God held us together. So he has to do this work in us. Uh, I, I can't do it. Like I've tried any and everything and yeah. I couldn't do it. So it's all in God's hands. I just, that's how I live now. Now yeah. I just like, <laughs> yeah. God, this is the situation. I don't know what to do. Yeah. So going so. back to some of the things that you said, I just <laughs> okay. want to, I just want to highlight stuff that I'm like sitting here just going, this is so awesome. How awesome is God in this? Even just going back, even farther back in your story, it's, that what it was your grandfather that grandfather your grandfather yeah gets these books yeah and and gives them to you. it's like I I feel like God is setting the stage before you were even ready before you even knew anything and so here are these books and and I love your hunger and thirst in that moment for him because it's it's like you you're you're looking at you're you're diving in the word it's not making sense and you're like I'm gonna it doesn't matter what I have to do right to learn what I need to learn about this God. Yeah. And, and you, and he was, and in his faithfulness, he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take you on this journey. Yeah. And so you start diving into children's books. And I love that so much. <laughs> how, how humble of a heart it takes to go, I'm going to do whatever it takes to yeah. follow this God and learn this thing. And, and in the midst of this, there's, you're learning, you're growing, but still you're, you're just so wrapped up and a slave to the shame of yeah, your past. Definitely. And then he, he meets you again in that and gives you a church. Yes. He, <laughs> and starts to, um, you start to grow and experience that. But then in his graciousness, he, he prepares you for the moment when he says, Okay, now it's time yeah. for you to take the next step. It's time for you to obey. Yeah. And and his faithfulness and his love in that is so overwhelming and yeah. so amazing. And 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 just how just your faithfulness to go, okay, I'm gonna do this. As yeah. hard as it is, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna trust that God is good. Yeah. So we were in that church and then we my friend was coming here. And she needed a ride to lady study. And that's when my eyes were opened to the real word. Like Mm. I was doing the Bible, like reading the kids stuff, you know. But then I started coming to the ladies ministry and they was actually learning how to study the Bible. Yeah. Not that I caught everything that time around, but right. <laughs> I've well, learned who does? and who gained catches it all the first so try? much yeah. from just coming at that time. But the biggest thing was that that was the transition that I needed to come into Calvary yeah. Chapel. And that we've been here six years in April and the stuff we've learned here is just beyond measure like is so much just doing the word by you know chapter by chapter verse by verse that is what I was craving so much after I had did the children's stuff you know and so I was even from the other church I was going online trying to find like a study to do and I would get mailed a study 
in the mail and I would do it and turn it, send it back in like homework, you know, yeah. and they would gr- not grade it, but <clears throat> like mark right. the things that I didn't exactly right. understand um, before we even came here. But then here they have the studies like verse by verse. Um, and that just really opened it up to me to help me to understand more. I don't know it all. Believe me, I yeah, barely no, can right. hit the... T- we're all, we're <laughs> yeah. all on a journey, right? <laughs> we're all yeah. learning. We're all I'm growing. I'm not saying I know it, but right. I just... Um, just learning stories and just taking what I have learned to help other people. So now you're you're diving deeper into the Word mm-hmm. and you're understanding it. Maybe yes. not getting it all, but exactly. you're you're growing. So what, are you, what did then are you starting to see God do in you? Then God brought trauma reboot to this church. <laughs> Tell and me a little bit about trauma that. Trauma reboot. I thought I put Chuck through a lot of trauma mm. and he needed this class. Mm. So I was going to ask him to do the class with me. And he said, yes. So I thought, oh, this is good. This would be good for a marriage, right? <laughs> and then um, God had different plans. Right. Like, serious. This is when I realized the stuff that happened in my past made me into the person I was before Christ. Yeah. And that's when a lot of, well, realizing that God still loved me through all my sin, you know, yeah, like I right. knew, knew that. Um, but he wanted me to heal yeah. from my past. Yeah. And that's what trauma reboot did. Yeah. And I have been in trauma reboot for three times because I couldn't yeah. get it all the first time, you know. It's all right. But, so but it, that goes back to your history. Me, that's your tenacity right. to go, I want yeah. to soak up and learn all yeah. that I can. And we can all yeah. learn from that. Yeah. So the first time was like I dealt with my childhood stuff. And then the second time was like how people have treated me because I also allowed that treating because of, you know, I didn't stand up for myself. I didn't stand up for my children, that kind of thing. And that's just part of my past. Um, and then this time was for our marriage. So, and I know God's doing a great work in our marriage and we're also in the marriage class here. So that's helping as well. Um, and trauma reboot has just opened, just helped me to live life. Does that make sense? Like, like I was just getting by for so long right? and not knowing how to live. And now because of the freedom from the sins of the past and what had happened to me from the past, there's so much freedom in that. Yeah. And I just want that for everybody. Like seriously. And, and just knowing God's love for them, that just is a life changing thing. Yeah. Yeah, You went from, just trying to survive yeah. to now you're experiencing this healing of your past. Yes. And so would you say you're in a thrive situation now yet, or is it more of just you've experienced the freedom? Like where would you put yourself on that kind of a timeline? Like I just want to live like, yeah. like I'm like I life feel is possible. Like life. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Hope I, is yeah, real. Yeah. Yeah. Hope is definitely real. Hope is been keeping me alive for many years so one of the things we say at calvary we are experiencing the peace and purpose of god yes definitely yeah definitely that's awesome yeah i feel like i am literally living now where i wasn't yeah i was still trapped so i felt like i was in all that bondage and i know there's some songs that we sing where just right. letting that bondage go and i just feel released from that bondage that the enemy kept telling me all those lies for so long that now I just say, whatever, you're a liar. Yeah. And seriously. Yeah. You're not trapping me again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm living for the Lord. That's so good. And so <clears throat> you're still, there's still more to your story because you're still growing and doing more things. And, and, um, so even for you to be here and even be doing this, this is podcast huge. is huge, Yes, but even more than that, you're you're not just attending trauma reboot, right? 
<laughs> right? Right. What are, what are you doing? I'm assisting. <laughs> You're assisting leading a trauma reboot, right? Correct. How, how big of a step are those things for you? For, for those Huge. that maybe don't know you well enough to... Huge. This is so out of my comfort zone. Yeah. So since trauma reboot, I would like started doing the discipleship classes yeah. um, for the um, identity in Christ. And that really was the 2020 vision, which I think was the last yeah. class in that last chapter, which that whole thing, just showing me my identity in Christ was like huge yeah. eye opener. Like when it shows the first picture where you're literally just seeing, knowing that Jesus died on the cross and you know you're forgiven and you see this little speck of light, yeah. but then you see the whole vision, the yeah. 2020 vision, all that God is where desiring. you're like yes. praising God and knowing that he does the work yes. in you. You're not, you, yeah. you can't do the work in you. Yeah. Only he can do that work and you are forgiven and he yeah. is your provider and he is everything, everything. You yeah. Need. This Jesus plus nothing equals everything yeah. Yeah. is true. Yeah. And then you see the whole heart where it's, you know, then you have the good and the bad in there, but the Holy Spirit can work that bad out. You surrendering it to yeah. him and then he helps to get that. Yeah. And it's just, then you see the whole sun, like the whole, the whole picture. Yeah. And so I feel like I'm seeing that whole picture. And so what is that doing for you? Is it well? So I will speak out loud okay. in groups, which is crazy. Which was not your your story no. before. I remember um, our first group. You're like, uh, do I have to share my answer? Do yeah, I have, yep. no. um, praying with people, praying out loud okay. in class. Yep. Um, just giving compassion to other people. Yeah. You know, going through struggles. Um, going to recovery church to help encourage those guys yeah. there and yeah. just loving on people, loving yeah. on others. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, we, we've talked about this even when we were setting up, it's like, I feel like that's your spiritual gift is to love on people and serve people well. But, yeah. but as you tell your story, what I love is that, um, the service and the heart that you had for people before probably had minor or maybe even no impact. It maybe filled the, they're welcomed in when they came into the dojo or, yeah, you know, yeah. there's a relational connection, but with what God has done through you, yeah. that the Holy spirit in you is impacting people. And I hope what so. a, what a, I, <laughs> it is, it is. I appreciate your, 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 you're humble trying to go, I hope so. But, but the reality is, is you are able to serve and love at such a deeper level now than ever before. And that's all God. That's because he loves me so much yeah. that I just love him so much yeah. that I love yeah. others. And you're modeling so. something that we desire everyone to do is, is we love and we serve out of this abundance of what God is doing in us. Yeah. And we recognize that it's not us, that it's him. And and you are such a good example for all of us in that. Thank you. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> well, I, I don't know where else to take the conversation other than thank you so much for sharing your story. And, and even, I'm just going to say this, this might be a conversation I normally would have afterwards, but we're... I love that our time together started rocky. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, I don't know what to say. Hey, let's edit this out. Because I feel like that was just a, that's a picture of kind of your journey. Yeah. And, and it, your journey started out rocky. Yeah. And God and his goodness brought it to this really beautiful place. And, and I feel like our conversation, even in this short time has done that. It started out rocky, but it came to such a beautiful conclusion of this is, this is the God that we love that doesn't leave us, that is with us, yeah. that gives us those beautiful moments, that sets up those beautiful moments. And then it has just been a story of him 
walking with you in growth as you mature. And, and now it's not a story about you. It's a story about him. And it's a story that is affecting other people as you serve and love. And, and our prayer is, is that as we wrap this up, that Melissa's story might encourage you. And maybe there's pieces in there that you identify with. And, um, we pray that God would encourage you in this, that you would see him and for who he is and how much he loves and how much he cares yeah. and how much he can change. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. If you had, maybe we can end on this note. Okay. What, what advice would you give to somebody just from where you're at now and understanding who God is? and Just knowing that he's always with me, that he always takes care of me and his promise is that he will never leave me nor forsake me yeah so i hold on to that with my dear life (laughs) and just abide in him study his word you know read it listen to sermons whatever it takes my study life is always changing like it's whatever i'm doing at the time that i can get get more knowledge of him yeah And that moves you to bold obedience, right? It does. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for that. So, Melissa, thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next time.